All right, hello students of science. Let's talk about meiosis, what it produces, and how it creates variation. Now these pictures here, in case you can't tell, we have a sperm fertilizing an egg and that there is a human egg. So, can't talk about meiosis without talking about human beings and chromosomes. Now we have 46 chromosomes total, or 23 pairs. Think of it as you have 23 pairs of shoes, but really you have 46 individual shoes. We'll talk about those more in just a second, but 46 total, 23 pairs. This is called a karyotype. It's the arrangement of all the chromosomes. This is a karyotype of a male because it has a Y chromosome. So, of those 46 you have, one of each of those came from your mom, one of each of those came from your dad. Uh, that's the symbol for uh, female and male. So of these 46, let's say this is yours, if you're a guy, obviously, one of these, that came from your mom, that came from your dad, or vice versa. And this one came from your mom, and this one came from your dad. But one of each of those, half of that donated by mom, half by dad. So each of those pair of chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, is called homologous. Normal humans have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, or 46 total. Here's another karyotype. You didn't see this is just all of those chromosomes just kind of scattered over. 46 chromosomes, but they have been arranged from this just kind of random thing there into an organized karyotype. Now, the homologous chromosomes are paired together right here. So this chromosome right here is paired up with that one. That's what you're seeing right there. But of these right here, you take them, you take the, the two identical ones, smack them together. Chromos these two chromosomes here, it's a combination of that one and that one. They've been stained a special thing. These two are homologous. These are homologous. These are homologous. So you have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, but 46 total. So each one of those pairs is called a homologous chromosome. So let's talk about sex and sexual reproduction. Simply put, without getting into uncomfortable specifics, sexual reproduction is the joining of cells which contain DNA from two parents to produce a new offspring. So let's say we got this um, wonderful gentleman here and this lovely lady here. The male and the female, they have to combine their genetic material in order to reproduce, and they reproduce an offspring. Every single offspring, every single child is something new, an experiment, an independently and randomly reshuffled of the parents' genes. So there's an advantage to this, a huge advantage to this, which you won't even understand until later. Offspring are a random mix of the parents' traits, and you don't get any two that are identical, with the exception of identical twins, though there's a little bit more on them. There's some really cool stuff called epigenetics. Click right here if you want to see some more of that. Uh, the question is, why is this an advantage? We're going to go into that later, but I'm really curious if any of you can think of, hey, why is it advantageous that no two offspring are identical? Now, there's also a disadvantage. You can see right here, this picture is really good. Not only is that offspring unique, but the disadvantage, the parents do actually lose half of their DNA. Half the DNA doesn't actually get passed on and out. Good, none of them are identical. Bad, you actually lose half the DNA. It doesn't actually make it to the next generation in that child. All right, so let's talk about the difference between sexual and asexual. In asexual reproduction, let's just say we have this snail here, for example. When it has an offspring, it's identical to the parent. That's asexual. It's just a single cell going, more or less, or a single organism going, kind of popping apart into two. Sexual reproduction has the advantage that you're a mixture of both of your parents. You have a little bit of both of them in there. So, asexual, identical. They're essentially clones. Sexual reproduction, you get this random mixing. Let's talk about gametes. Gametes are sex cells. Sex requires special sex cells. Those are called gametes. As you can see right here, the, there are two types of gametes. There's the egg, and there's the sperm. Oh, you just kind of feel sorry. It's like, like, you're almost there. You're almost, oh, forever trying to get into that egg. You never will. So, male obviously have the sperm, female obviously have the egg. Each egg and sperm carries a random half of genes from one parent. So, either of those gametes is a random half of the parents. And you have two of them fused during fertilization. They're, oh, they're, he made it. That sperm made it into the egg. So, fertilization fertilizes the egg, becomes a zygote. Here's actually a really cool 3D picture of it. That's an electron microscope. That's the sperm actually burrowing into the egg for fertilization. So, I say gametes, you say sex cells. And the gametes are the sperms and the eggs. All right, meiosis, simply put, 
It's how the body makes genetically unique cells, they're all different, those are gametes, with half the number of chromosomes. I'm going to repeat that because it's super important and it's a super simple definition. It's how the body makes genetically unique cells, they're all gametes, with half the number of chromosomes of the parent. Each one is unique because it is a random selection of the parent's genes, the parent's DNA. So, every single person is unique. Everyone is different because you are a random selection of your parents' genes. The men are making the sperm, they're all unique. Women are making the eggs, they're all unique. Meiosis also increases those differences with something called crossing over. So it increases the number of differences, variation, very important word that you're going to be seeing a lot with this process called crossing over. Crossing over. During prophase one of meiosis one, Yep, meiosis, a heck of a lot like mitosis. Yep, there's even a prophase. Homologous chromosomes pair up. Remember, those are the ones that's like your left shoe and your right shoe. They're very, very similar, obviously not identical. So here we have two homologous chromosomes, very, very similar, not identical, obviously different colors here representing they come from different parents. But those chromosomes actually cross over their arms and they kind of switch their DNA, creating new combinations. So the arms kind of cross over there, and we have a new resulting organism at, or new resulting chromosome at the end there. Arms cross over, exchange, and go back. Here you can see another pair of homologous chromosomes. Again, they're not identical, but they're pretty gosh darn similar. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, all capital here, lowercase here, you know, dominant versus recessive, but they can cross over and exchange. So what you're left with is, you know, different chromosomes. They're different mixes of that. And when you're actually doing that, we're, we're not just talking about, you know, little strands of DNA. Those are actual genes. Like you could be mixing up the eyelash length, essentially, from one grandparent on with the hemophilia tendency from a different grandparent. Because you have a new chromosome that's a random mix of them. So that's the idea there with meiosis.